before I get started, I want you to know there's going to be a brief quiz before you <laughs> present presented so much data and so much information that I know it's difficult to avoid. So I encourage all of you to go to the websites and look at it in more detail later. Uh, I'm Dr. William Wooten. I'm a retired family physician and addiction medicine specialist <clears throat> and currently chairman of the Mayor's Substance Abuse Task Force. Uh, I appreciate the uh, Community Health Needs Assessment Group inviting me to share the work of the task force with you here today. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Click the side button. Right side, okay. Uh, the Community Health Needs Assessment Group is going to focus on these three areas related to substance use in the next year or two. The, uh, Deaconess Women's Hospital and St. Vincent Evansville Hospital for women and children will participate in the Indiana Perinatal Network Pilot Program for Perinatal Substance Use Screening with a goal to reduce the number of babies born with neonatal abstinence syndrome and decrease the days in the, in the ICU with uh, babies born with neonatal abstinence syndrome. And secondly, uh, they're going to investigate the use of ESPERT, which is screening brief intervention and referral to treatment uh, for pre-screening of people in primary care offices. And then thirdly, they're intending to support the work of the Mayor Substance Abuse Task Force. The, uh, a couple of things I want to just touch on the first two. There are tools that have been designed by research scientists on prevention that allow primary care physicians, pe people doing prenatal care, to identify high-risk pregnancies and intervene before delivery with hopes of preventing long-term problems with both the mother and, and the, the newborn child. Uh, so our hope will be to implement these tools among the people providing prenatal care around the community uh, and identify these pregnant women earlier. Uh, with ESPER, uh, primary care physicians need to do a better job in the office uh, seeing patients day to day for annual physicals and other problems. Uh, myself, I'm a consumer these days rather than a provider, and I I know as a as a family physician, as I spent more time in the field of addiction, I did a much better job of screening my patients for substance use problems. And it takes a uh, a little bit of practice, but it's not difficult. And it doesn't take much time once you get used to doing it help a lot of people at an early stage of problem development. Now I'd like to focus on the, the task force work. I created this slide a couple of days ago, uh, so don't hold me to it. It's a work in progress. Some of the lines may change in their direction. Some of the circle, squares may turn to circles. Uh, but I wanted to just give you a, an idea of the overall scope and uh, work of the task force. Uh, the mayor and the city of Evansville has a slogan of E is for everybody and I'd like to emphasize that uh, everybody needs to be involved in a solution to all the problems we've talked about today. Uh, it's my opinion that uh, these solutions uh, need to begin at several levels. Uh, the people who are talking today can't solve these problems for you. Uh, they need to begin at the individual level, parent, caregiver level, family, neighborhood, schools, and community level. Uh, and the complicated thing about all of these problems is that all of us, all families, all agencies, organizations, they're all at different levels of change. And it's, it's all about changing the way we do things. We don't keep doing the same old things expecting different results, correct? We're trying to change our behaviors to get more positive outcomes and have a more positive community. Evansville is a great community, and we all enjoy a lot of wonderful benefits of living in Evansville, but great communities also uh, are proactive in addressing their problems. The uh, Mayor's Substance Abuse Task Force was formed with a mission to engage the Evansville community in working together to promote substance use awareness, education, prevention, treatment, and recovery. And we have three basic goals. 
to help the community acknowledge, realize there is a problem, uh, understand, effectively address, and effectively address the problem. Uh, we want to promote effective prevention strategies and programs and help people access treatment and recovery options. Uh, this is largely a volunteer group. There are approximately 30 people involved with the task force itself. And there are probably another 30 or 40 people working alongside the different work groups that are listed below. <coughs> uh, we have a good website, msatf.org, which I would encourage you to visit uh, with four pillar areas on the website, knowledge, prevention, uh, treatment, and recovery. A lot of good links for parents, employers, teachers, children, and so forth. Uh, the, our data work group has been a huge project. It's been two to three years in operation, and uh, we're collecting data from the coroner's office, law enforcement, hospitals, emergency rooms, uh, quantifying Narcan uh, deployments, and other indicators that we can benchmark and put on the website and then track over time to see how we're doing as far as improving these things as we go forward. Uh, the prevention group has a number of different uh, things on their agenda. Uh, there have been some grant activity with a grant to reduce alcohol uh, and providing some family programs around the community. Uh, we have a messaging program that will hopefully kick off in the next few months. Uh, and the human resource group or group is a uh, group where we're working with the Evansville Area Human Resource Association to start addressing some of the needs for employers and employees with regard to workplace issues and substance use. Uh, in the last couple of months, I was uh, uh, contacted by a local pharmacist who had some concerns about uh, prescribing practices. And uh, as a result of that contact, we formed a a new group that will involve not only retail pharmacists in the community but hospital pharmacists as well to start looking at things that we might do to uh, impact uh, physician practices and so forth. Uh, in the last year or so a long-term treatment group has come together. There are a number of community leaders involved in that group and we hope to emulate or develop a program in Evansville that would be in some ways similar to the Recovery Kentucky program. Uh, the Warm Center in, in Henderson is a good example of that, the Women's Addiction and Recovery Matter. Uh, it's a six-month treatment program for women in Evansville. We're looking primarily at a men's program for, for right now, but that's subject to further discussion. And we have a lot of hurdles with uh, some state financing issues and other obstacles to overcome before we can uh, get too serious about that issue. But uh, it's, it's a need in the community for people to receive longer, longer courses of treatment without the issues of co-pays, deductibles, and uh, bankruptcy. Um, the Treatment and Harm Reduction Committee has had a number of discussions. We've supported or encouraged uh, treatment centers to consider looking at uh, uh, recovery coaches, people to assist people after treatment and before they get into treatment and after emergency room visits. And I hope we'll be able to look at a number of ways to improve uh, treatment outcomes and, and uh, accountability on the part of treatment centers in the long haul. So I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'll be around for a while afterwards. <coughs>